Hey guys, um, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Vanessa. I am a mother to one um, little boy who just turned one the other day. Um, and I've just been trying to document as much as possible like what's been going on uh, in this new motherhood journey because once I realized how hard it is, I was just like, okay, now, before I go on, I just want to say something that one thing many people have asked me and I want to say this. Motherhood has taught me to be very prayerful. Let me just start from there. I am not perfect. I am nowhere perfect. But I will tell you for a fact that if it wasn't Amari and if he wasn't in my life, I do not think I would have really slowed down with how I was really going because I was literally the party girl that you would never ever imagine. The kind of person who would probably go out from Thursday and you know finish on Sunday, probably pick me up and we end up in Nakuru and I don't know I was working, I was actually working. Many people assumed I had a balance but behind the scenes I really didn't. Now when I look back I'm like wow that was actually crazy. Um, and. I guess having Amari had to really, it just, like, he really slowed me down in ways that at the first time when I held him in the first few months, I thought that that would be, like, the worst thing ever, but it's been the best -est, uh, a gift that I can never even imagine. And I look at him, like, as my saving grace. I usually tend to think that the same way God sent Jesus, um, his only son, to come and save us, um, if he didn't send his only son, he would not have that mercy on us. And I feel like sometimes God send us or sends us children so that he can have mercy on us because they are innocent. And I feel like if it wasn't for Amari, probably God would not have the same grace for me because I was over it. Like I was misusing it, man. Like if there were cards over there that like God was giving me, I was like almost on my last one. So he, I feel like he was my saving grace. And for so many of us mothers, we don't necessarily have to choose or you don't get to choose all the time how you get your baby. But I feel like after you get the first one, you kind of learn a lot of things. And if you don't learn from that, then I don't know, man. I guess there's a lot in store or a lot more that's going to happen than that. That You thought that was your worst and now something else could happen. But anyways, this is not about that. This video is mainly about my last one year and just the amazing things that God has done for me and it's so funny because I had said that I will look at the last one year and I didn't know how I would be because it felt so hard at that time you know dealing with people who just look down on you dealing with people who betray you dealing with people who just kept the naysayers you know the people who'd be like ah yeah whatever she's not really gonna make it anyways um, the biggest thing for me when I got Amari, so obviously there are those things that people tell you and I'm gonna start like this is like number one, the first um, testimony that I'm going to give you. So I got Amari um, and I thank God number one, he was a full grown baby, a healthy baby and that for me in itself already is a testimony because getting a baby you come to realize when you're a mom is not such an easy process and I had a natural birth and um, my son was healthy and I thank God for that that's on number one I went to hospital I came out with my baby I only stayed for like two days and that was even out of choice like they would have probably discharged me but you know then um, number two the first time I remember people telling me diapers would be the most expensive thing ever now, for me personally, I was so blessed because I got friends and at my baby shower who brought me like a lot of diapers. And not only that, there's a friend of mine who really pushed um, for me to get diapers and I got like Huggies. I got like a boxes and boxes of Huggies gold um, that I even thought, okay, am I really going to finish these diapers? Of course, like diapers actually do end up finishing. But what that did for me, it set our standards. Like I felt like it, stand st it set the right standards for me and my son. And from then on, I just didn't buy any other brand for some quite uh, some time. So I really didn't struggle with the whole thing of buying diapers. 
And by the way, guys, the reason I'm doing this story is because if you're a mom and you're watching this and you really just need that motivation, it's just to show you that God is real. I never like using social media as a platform for like showing off as a platform of look at this, look at that. Others, I could be stunting. I could be like, oh, look, I got all this by myself and stuff. No, it's really God, you know, and God uses anyone he likes and will send people until everything is done for you just to your liking. So, yeah, I got diapers, uh, a lot of them. And it was just, um, I mean, that was a whole testimony. Number three, I never bought clothes for some time because, again, I was blessed with good friends who came at my baby shower and just gave us, like, a lot of stuff. So I never really did. And maybe you don't look at that, like, as a blessing, but it is because some people don't even get baby showers, you know. But I had my baby shower and I had really good clothes, new clothes. And I literally just recently is when I started wondering, where do I buy clothes? I only started shopping for Amari when it was like eight or nine months, you know. Um, <clears throat> the other testimony, the biggest one for me, has been moving out. And the reason why this is such a big deal for me is because anyone who knows how moving out to the small baby is not easy, then you would understand that it, it takes a lot to manage a nanny. It takes a lot to manage a baby and a nanny in the same house and I cannot lie to you I moved out uh, from my grandma's house so initially those of you who know me I used to stay alone I've actually stayed alone for a really long time but when I gave birth I moved in with my grandma and when I did of course now like you're literally at the forefront with family members and there are a lot of like hurdles here and there that I can now understand fully how staying with family members when you have a baby can be really really trying because you're trying to create your own culture, your own set of rules and values for your child and and for yourself. And then it doesn't happen and it's very, very, um, it's hard. It's hard to be, a, sometimes it can be very hard to be a mom around your family members. Um, but anyways, so that happened. And I remember moving out and I remember moving to where I'm staying now. And I was looking around and thinking, when will I ever even manage to get furniture for this place you know like i only had a couch i made a tv stand with a box a box for a tv and um and a wardrobe literally the wardrobe now is here like not even a wardrobe what am i saying guys oh my god it's not a wardrobe it's like one of those plastic um storage boxes you know that's that's the kind of stuff that we like we I used and of course I was very proud of my creation at the time because I put like a curtain on it and the TV of course that was my first TV that I owned before when I used to stay alone I just used to use my laptop and that's another thing when you have a child it forces you to try and make your house or turn your house into a home because I was the ideal like bachelorette and I never used to have guests so I didn't really have like many um towels in the house uh, a tea bedside mats all those kind of things and those are things that i did really think about like when you're a bachelor or a bachelorette like you're okay with one spoon one fork one sufuria then now you finally move and you try and you really really try to turn your house into a home and that's just something that was really bothering me because i'm like okay now here we are so let me tell you <clears throat> through moving out i realized that when god has ordained or when god allows for something to happen he will literally set everything. Nothing will feel hard. Like everything will be set. So interesting enough, I moved out. This bed that I'm on, a good friend of mine who I don't even think, like we were not that close, but I know. Um, <clears throat> she's the one who helped me and she helped me move. Um, the, like it's so funny. Things were just falling into place. She gave me this bed and she, she was a newlywed and she was just like, you know what? Uh, my husband doesn't need it um he had it before and he doesn't need it and brought it complete set with the mattress isn't that like profound and crazy at the same time <clears throat> so we had one bed which was at like the other one that the nanny's room and then now this one which i was given ah yeah so now there we are um just like a month into moving the company i was working for shut down so when it shut down, I was like, oh Lord, what is going to happen? If you've watched my video um, before, I said I, I moved out and I lost my job and stuff. And 
<clears throat> it it was crazy like a month later that was like we moved here in november december that like i didn't really have a job i actually didn't have one i was just sourcing for one going for interviews that, that were just pissing me off and finally god blessed me with one that's another testimony now recently i kind of got like extra gigs here and there and managed to you know uh, buy like a table and i was just looking at my list like i wrote down everything that i really wanted and everything that i wanted god to do for me like in the next six months because i'm like hey, hey we're not going into 2021 with like old problems we want new things and that's where my faith has taken me because i've come to realize that when you place your faith in god instead of man or man it just puts you in a situation where you realize you don't have to beg anyone because anything that's yours is yours it puts you in a trance or a, at a place where you realize that he will actually do everything for you at the right time and ask and you shall receive and also lastly another thing that i learned is the power of giving that in as much as i felt like i didn't have a lot i actually had a lot to give but i didn't realize it and i was just so i started like being a bit more like generous because before i think i was hoarding a lot and having the mentality of this is going to go so i can't but when I let go of that, and there's that anxiety, especially now during the season of Corona, there's that anxiety of if I give this, how will I get tomorrow? And there's a misconception that when you're giving, you have a lot. It's not that you have a lot. It's just that you realize you're going to be given more. And yeah, that's that's exactly what I started doing. So if I felt led to give someone something, I would. If I felt like, um, hey, this person has a need or whatever, and you just don't wake up and give anyone. You pray about it and you tell God that please lead me to the person that you want me to bless us with. Like now with Amari's clothes, I found out like who exactly who I was meant to give out to. And that was literally, um, that's how the system works, man. You cannot hoard. You can really not hoard and you should not hoard. So my recent and biggest testimony was, I think some of you guys who follow me on IG saw on my stories that I put um stories like of wood like a tv stand and stuff and i remember hey just the day before like last week i was just calling a, a carpenter and i was like how much is it for a tv stand um and the carpenter was like oh it's going to be guys i'm looking at my cheeks i'm like wow my cheeks have grown anyways yeah so I mean, I looked at the, I, I called the carpenter and the carpenter was like oh it's going to be like 12,000 shillings i was like 12,000 what and I was like, what about, like, you know, that's the time you try and, like, look for the cheaper options. You're like, if you place wood, itakuwa ngapi. If you just use metal, will it, okay, fine, can we just use paper then? You know, like, you really try and see if you can balance. But it was almost, um, like, impossible. So I'd already known in my head, fine, I might, I might as well, like, remove this money because... The thing is, I wanted a, a higher TV stand because Amari likes going there and literally staring at the TV. So I felt like I wanted something a bit higher, something that, where he can't reach the TV and he doesn't have to like keep straining and stuff. And also, of course, who doesn't want a TV stand to make their house look all pretty and stuff? So as I was sat here, today is, uh, today is Wednesday. As I was sat here on Sunday, someone texted me and naturally WhatsApped me and asked me, okay um vanessa do you do you i want to give you this tv stand i want to give you this bookshelf i want to give you this coffee table and i was like what do you want of course in human culture and in human ways um you always believe that people want to give you something because they want something from you and of course even when i told my friend that she was like what what exactly for what for what game i was like no I mean, we're friends, not that close, but randomly just decided, okay, let me give you um, this. And I said, how, when do you want to give it to me? I thought it was one of those things where the, the person was just thinking about it. Kumbe, it was not. It was not. And that was Sunday, Monday morning. Um, No, that was Monday, sorry. This was Monday. So yesterday morning, Tuesday morning. All I had to do was pay 2600 to get the stuff delivered, 600 inclusive of like carrying the stuff up. 
and guys uh, i cannot express how blessed i felt and how i was just astounded because i kind of like it took me back to when people were like oh now when you move out will you be able to do it will you be able to hack i don't know what and i remember that somebody who had promised me someone who was very very close to us somebody who actually kind of owed it to us um had said that they would give us a tv stand and they didn't and now here we are now see god see see god as in guys it's proper wood it's like it's really really nice and on instagram people were asking me oh where did you get that wood it's really nice um and let me tell you i can open openly say i never like killed anyone for it obviously i never stole anything from anyone never slept with anyone for it never did anything crazy it came to me they came to me and with that being said i just hope that i mean just look at the wood i've just like i'll put this somewhere the the photo or the video or whatever like i just took earlier on to show you guys and the reason why I don't keep quiet with such stuff is because I know that God is good and he does amazing things and everything that I have and everything that I am is really just because of him. Um, I know that things can get really bleak <clears throat> and it can feel like you're in some weird sort of game sometimes where you're being moved around in a game and you don't understand what's happening. But have faith. That's all I can tell you. Because from my experience right now, I learned that having faith is the biggest ingredient when it comes to your relationship with God. Not that I'm not a sinner, not that I pray special prayers, not that I fast from Monday to Sunday. I just know that I am not, especially with Amari, if like children do come with their own plates for real, for real. And I also know that and I believe that. As Christians, it does not mean that you have to toil or struggle so that you know that God is there. There are times that, yes, your faith will be tested and that's when you're really meant to stand strong. But you also have to pray, you also have to just stay close to God, but it's not complicated. I challenge you to write everything you want for you and your child, no matter how little, no matter how small. Guys, I have a list where every time I even want a non-stick ban because... Who is God not to? You know? Who is God not to? And leave whoever says what not. Stop looking at things from a very logical and practical way. And start thinking, yes, this is it. Like, this is actually possible, you know? So, yeah, guys, um, that that's my testimony. I am just really excited about what God is going to do for us next and um let's just keep encouraging one another with this kind of stories because you might think it's in your own might but it's not it's really god and just leave it up to god he will make everything easy possible and smooth and in those times when you feel like you can't do it anymore these are the kind of testimonies that you remember that he never let you go so yeah, if you have any questions or anything else that you want to tell me or any um, comments, please put it down in the comment section. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys here a lot more because I have, um, I feel like I just need to work a lot more on my content. So yeah, hope you have a great week and see ya.